The topic for this lesson is inertial and non-inertial reference frames. A reference frame or a frame of reference is a coordinate system we use for our measurements such as position, force, etc. We may also consider a reference frame as a set of coordinate system that is tied to the motion of an observer. An inertial reference frame is one that has no acceleration, which means that it is either at rest or traveling at a constant velocity. Physics laws work the same in all inertial reference frames. However, in a non-inertial reference frame, a reference frame that has an acceleration that is not zero, the physics laws we have learned in mechanics may not work normally. For example, if I am an observer inside a car traveling at a constant velocity, and I drop a penny in the moving car, I would see that the penny falls straight down into my hand. I am traveling with the car at constant velocity, so I am an inertial reference frame. And I can explain my observations using Newton's laws of motion. There is gravity pulling down on the penny, so it falls down with a 9.8 meters per second square downward acceleration. There is no horizontal force acting on the penny, so the, in the horizontal direction, the penny starts with zero velocity and stays with no motion in the horizontal direction. Now, if you are an observer standing on the side of the road, you are at rest with no acceleration and therefore an inertial reference frame. Relative to you, the penny travels with me and the car at the same constant velocity the moment it is let go. So, it is like a projectile shot horizontally. The penny maintains the same constant velocity as me and therefore falls into my hand. You can explain your observations using Newton's laws of motion. There is gravity pulling down on the penny, so it falls with a 9.8 meters per second squared acceleration downward. There is no horizontal force acting on the penny, so in the horizontal direction, the penny keeps going at a constant velocity. Everything works in inertial reference frames. Of course, remember that we are on the Earth and spins with the Earth and the Earth is going around the Sun, and the Sun orbits around the center of the Milky Way galaxy, etc. So even though I'm not moving relative to the ground, my acceleration is not exactly zero. If you do the calculations to find our centripetal acceleration v squared over r with the Earth's spin, even at the equator where the centripetal acceleration is the largest, you will get about 0.034 meters per second squared. This is about one third of a percent of the gravitational acceleration 9.8 meters per second squared. If you find the centripetal acceleration v squared over r for the Earth's orbit around the Sun, you will get an even smaller acceleration, about one sixth of the acceleration caused by the Earth's spin. So, me sitting here is not exactly an inertial reference frame, but very close to one because of my very small acceleration. So, for the motion that is in small scale, it is okay for us to treat the ground as an inertial reference frame. Now, let's consider an obviously non-inertial reference frame. This time, let's pretend that I am in a car accelerating to the right. Again, I'm dropping a penny. Is this penny going to fall into my hand or is it going to fall to the right of my hand or to the left of my hand? In the accelerating car, both the eye and the penny would lean back that way to the left. The seat in the car would push on me to keep me accelerating with the car. But there's no such force on the penny to make the penny accelerate with the car. So the penny would fall to the left of my hand. To me, an observer accelerating with the car 
This is a non-inertial reference frame. This time, I cannot explain my observations. Relative to me, the penny starts from rest. So it should fall straight down. However, it went back that way as if there's a force pulling it back that way. Of course, there is no such force pulling it back. But if I pretend that there is such a force, then I can explain what I see without a problem. This force I have to make up is called a pseudo force or fictitious force or inertia force. Let's look at another example of non-inertial reference frame. Suppose that I'm on a spinning merry-go-round when I let go of a penny. Relative to me, an observer rotating with the merry-go-round, the penny flies outward. Therefore, I have to pretend that there is this pseudo force, the centrifugal force, pulling the penny outward in order for me to be able to explain my observations with the laws of motion. I discussed it in more detail in my 19th forces video lesson. Another interesting example of non-inertial reference frame is the Coriolis effect. The Coriolis effect is a deflection of a moving object when observed in a rotating reference frame. For example, if I sit on the edge of a merry-go-round rotating counterclockwise, and I throw a ball toward the center the moment I pass this location, the ball would get two initial velocities, one from my throw going this way. The other one tangent to the circle because the moment the ball is thrown, it has the same velocity as me, the circular motion velocity tangent to the circle. I can add these two velocities using the parallelogram method. In this case, again, the parallelogram is a rectangle and the diagonal is the sum. So the observer at rest would see that the ball has this initial velocity. Once the ball leaves my hand, there will be no horizontal force on the ball. So it travels at a constant velocity and it follows this path along the straight line in the horizontal direction. However, for me, an observer rotating counterclockwise with the merry-go-round, I would see the ball somehow curves like this. The ball would curve this way instead of traveling straight toward the center because when the merry-go-round spins, the speed at the rim is faster than the speed, say, over here because over here it has a smaller circumference to travel in a revolution. So when the ball gets here, relative to the spinning merry-go-round, the ball is faster in this direction than the floor of the merry-go-round and therefore goes ahead of the spinning floor. So the ball curves this way with respect to the spinning reference frame. To explain my observations using the laws of motion, I will have to make up this pseudo Coriolis force to make things work. I have included a link to a demonstration video on my website. Coriolis effect is important for us because the Earth is a spinning reference frame. It spins about one revolution a day because there is the largest circumference at the equator. The speed is the fastest there, slower with higher latitude because of the smaller circumference for the circular motion. If we look at the wind from the north, coming from a higher latitude, the wind is slower than the ground here, so relative to the ground, the wind falls behind that way. If we look at the wind from the south, it's faster and therefore travels ahead of the ground and it goes ahead that way. So cyclones formed in the northern hemisphere go counterclockwise. In the southern hemisphere, it's the opposite. The wind from the north goes faster they have a faster speed in that direction, so it goes ahead. The wind from the south 
falls behind. So the cyclones formed in the southern hemisphere are clockwise. Near the equator, the circumference here and there are not too different. So the Coriolis effect is not strong and the cyclones rarely form near the equator. For this topic, a question often asked by my students is, do toilets and bathtubs drain in opposite directions in the northern hemisphere and the southern hemisphere? No, these drains involve very short-range water flow, so the Coriolis effect is not obvious at all. However, for something that goes long-range, Coriolis effect is important. In the First World War, there was a battle between the British and German Navy near Falkland Islands in the Southern Hemisphere. Initially, the British artillery shells were missing their targets by about 100 meters. It turned out that their calibration manual for the Coriolis effect correction was written for the Northern Hemisphere while they were fighting a battle in the Southern Hemisphere. They corrected for the Coriolis effect in the wrong direction.